What's going on guys, MK Tom Brady here. In this video, I'm doing a full, pretty much teleport tutorial in Mortal Kombat 11. I did something similar to this, but there was a lot of data I didn't have. I didn't really lab it as well as I should have. And that video is very, very inaccurate and I've labbed it a lot. And I really wanna go over things from true recovery frames to teleport as opposed to what the game tells you and, and how to interpret that. The game is really giving you the right information but a lot of people interpret that information wrong and I wanna go over that, as well as the turnaround frames, which I went over in my first video, but I didn't show you guys how to cancel your turnaround frames and turn around like that. Okay, so the teleport itself, let's get into this. If you're coming from some other 2D games, you'll notice Mortal Kombat frame data is more like a game like Tekken as opposed to a game like Street Fighter. It's slow for a 2D game like Street Fighter, but it's on par with the frame data from, from a game like Tekken. So this applies to everything, including turning around. So let's get into all this information here. If you think this is anything like the first video, you're sadly mistaken. You're gonna miss out on a ton of information, so please stick around. Okay, so, teleports. Startup recovery. Now, what do these startup frames mean? This means that it takes 38 frames to begin the transition from where I am to where he is. So on frame 38, she begins the transition to teleport. It takes 30 frames, take 38 frames to get to that point. On the 38th frame, she begins to animate the transition. 37 recovery frames. Now this is what I really want to touch on here. And I'm using Cetrion's teleport as a baseline. I'm gonna move through pretty much all of them. So People tend to confuse recovery data with on-block data. What do I mean by that? So, you're playing combat league, maybe friendly casuals, maybe tournament. Something's giving you a problem. You say, I wonder if I can punish that. You go to practice mode and you look at the information. People actually look at this and I hear things like, react to it. You have 37 frames to punish it, bro. They confuse the recovery frames, recovery data for on block data. Many people actually kind of look at it like, you know, 37 frames of recovery is the same as I blocked a move and the move is minus 37. They interpret it as once she appears behind you, she can't move block strike for 37 frames. This is false. Um, and in fact, the data can be misleading. This teleport is actually safer than Raiden's, which is so weird because Raiden's says 19 recovery, Cetrion's says 37. This is crazy, right? The game is telling you that a move that has faster recovery actually has slower recovery. So that can be very confusing to people. So I really want to kind of address that now so you guys know exactly how teleports and how to deal with them works. Recovery frames is tied to animation. Because it takes X amount of time for her to teleport, her recovery frames factor that in. Raiden's is much faster, his recovery frames factor that in. Since his is faster, his recovery is faster. But, while it acts, so if you've never played a fighting game before, this is your first one, which it is for a lot of you. Once she appears behind you, this is not 37 frames. She recovers clearly much faster than 37 frames. If you really knew what 37 frames of true recovery look like, it's an eternity in fighting games. It's much faster than this. Now the 37 frames comes from after frame 38 of startup, that from the time she begins to transition to the time she's actually behind you, it takes 37 frames to go from that to guarding. Not once she appears behind you to guarding. So what are her true recovery frames? Out here, all these fluff recovery frames are irrelevant to you. You're not gonna do anything with those frames. You wanna know about these frames. The frames when she goes from here and now, now she's here. These are the frames that matter. So I wanna go over that with you. I tested moves all different speeds. And you know, I teleport and notice, by the way, I'm going the wrong way, even though I'm reacting to her and she's clearly behind me. See that punish right there? That's that punish. Now that's kind of difficult to do. 
and we see her guarding it quite a lot. I was very, very fortunate to get it on the first try. And I got it there again. What's happening here is I tried all kinds of moves, 15 frames, 16 frames, 17 frames. The only attack I was able to land is a 14 frame attack. This means that her true recovery is 14 frames. She has the safest of all the teleports. So like I said, even though a character like Raiden, his recovery says 19, hers says 37. The truth is, from the time they both appear behind you, she recovers faster than he does, so the recovery frames may make you believe one is safer than the other, but it's actually wrong because you can misinterpret what the recovery frames are also tied to, which is the animation. The animation is quicker, the transition is quicker, hence the recovery is quicker, but not the recovery after transition from one side to the other. So, and that's where people are, don't seem to really understand and they get that point wrong. They get that wrong and either you're playing and you look at something and you know, you're like, wow, 37 frames of recovery. I can really unload with some juicy damage and Cetrion teleports. And maybe you're doing something too slow. She down ones you, down threes you, neutral jumps, blocks it. People are sitting there going, wow, combat league, lag, masher, etc." And the real truth is you're dealing with this improperly. So now that we know this move, actually it's true recovery is 14 frames. How do we deal with it? Okay, now teleport and then guard. And notice I'm gonna react to this teleport here. And right there I delayed it. And here I'm early. And here I'm early and here I delay. Now watch again. I'm going to still hesitate here. And clearly, in some instances, she's like basically completely behind me. In some instances, you know, when I hesitate, I can punish her. So what is causing me to go the wrong way? Like, you're reacting to it. Wow, right here? She was literally behind me. Okay, she was actually completely behind me there, and I still went the wrong way. And if you play against Cetrion, you might be saying, this happens to me all the time. What is the problem? Well, I want you to notice how many frames it takes to actually turn around. It takes about four. Now, if you're coming from most 2D games, since I haven't played every 2D game ever, I don't want to say all, but for most of them, as in almost every single one of them, you know, their frame data is much faster in general than Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat works off more like Tekken data, eight frame jab, you know, 12, 13 frame mid, etc. A 13 frame move in a game like Street Fighter is obnoxiously slow. Um, so in Mortal Kombat, frame data is more along the lines of a 3D game, including their turnaround frames. How does this, what does this mean? This means in most 2D games, you think you're auto-facing. You see the teleport, you react to it, boom, you go this way. It's not one auto-face reaction. It's two reactions. Because your turnaround frames are so fast, before, even though you've hit the button, before your move begins to animate, the turnaround frames are that much faster. They come out almost immediately. So it's two reactions. Turnaround frames supersede the animation of the attack. So before the attack begins to animate, your character turns around and the animation then begins to come out. So it's not an auto face. It's the turnaround is just that fast that it actually begins to, it happens before the actual move begins to animate. In Mortal Kombat, a situation like this, I'm about to turn around. But because my move is now animating right as my character is trying to turn around, because the turnaround frames aren't as fast as a lot of other 2D games, the game says, oh, this animation is coming out. Guess what? This move doesn't auto face. It's going to go the wrong way. And this is what happens. So when you're late, they block or poke you, right? Uh, and if you hesitate, you get them. And if you're too early, you know, then that happens. You know, it just go the wrong way. And again, like, I'm trying to get a really like, Okay, that was, again, it's another example of, she's literally, that right there, she was literally behind me right there. <laughs> she was literally behind me again. 
and it went the wrong way. On reaction, what does that mean? Let me point out something real quick. At a certain point, you have to react to teleport, right? If you start anticipating, then every move looks like a teleport to you. And you're literally just swinging for the fences and you're going to be too early. On reaction refers to something you have to react to and then do something with a more muscle memory kind of reaction. In other words, uh, you actually have to see the teleport and then react to it. You're not going to know the exact frame that's going to happen and you can't go around anticipating and, and she jabs and you throw an attack out on the screen. What you really want to do is you want to confirm the teleport and react to it. Reaction doesn't mean see something, take two minutes to ponder the right course of action, and then respond accordingly. On reaction means you see it, you react to it. Now, if you actually react to the teleport with an attack, you're going to go the wrong way every single time. So if you react to this, if you react to that, you're going to go the wrong way every single time. You've got to see it, react to it, and then know to hesitate. But this type of hesitation causes a lot of mistakes. Sometimes you're still too early. Sometimes you're too late. Especially online where, let's be serious here, there's a few frames of latency even in the best connections. So what's the best way to deal with this? Well, the best way is to turn around itself. Notice how long it takes Sub-Zero to turn around. And now notice that. Why was this so fast? And why is this so slow? Here's why. By tapping down, it speeds up your auto facing and even though she's still kind of half in front of you half behind you tapping down will pretty much realign your character and have him face the opposite direction immediately this means instead of doing that on reaction or having to hesitate you can just tap down neutral and do it and get it every single time so what you would do is you would wait for the teleport confirm the teleport is happening, do down neutral, one, two, or whatever it is your punish is, preferably a fast one because you don't want to go down to the frame on like your slowest attacks, and you get the punish. Now, when you see the teleport, you just down neutral, one, two, or whatever it is you're gonna do, and you get it every time, there's no hesitation. It's a fluid movement. It's, I see the teleport, boom, one, two, no hesitation, no whatever, and you get to punish every single time. You're never too late. You're never too early. You get it every single time because you're canceling your turnaround frames, which now allows you to react very, very fast without having to worry about, you know, you know, hesitation or something like this. It's a, it's a, it's a quick, smooth movement. Boom, boom. Now, how you punish also is very, very, very important because characters that have teleports don't just have close teleports. They now have far teleports as well. So, for example, Cetrion, right? Far teleport here, it says punish. Now, not everyone is as fortunate as a character like Sub-Zero. They don't all have super, super, super fast uh, advancing moves. In fact, character like Sub-Zero doesn't even have to guess. He can actually slide both the close and far teleport and punish it every single time with no guess. However, a lot of characters don't have that luxury. And when you react to the teleport, kind of have to make a read, close or far. Problem is sometimes you make the read of close, you react to the teleport, and the move you're doing takes so long oh, to... Uh, recover, see that right there, my recovery? 33 frames. If she teleports, I down neutral. Look at how long that takes. Now, that's only 20 frames of recovery. So she's literally recovering within a few frames earlier than me. So if you actually do an attack that has too many recovery frames, she can actually recover and then punish your recovery frames with something like um, her, her geyser. But you wanna do moves that are fast, 
and recover fast. So if she were to geyser here, I would recover in time to block it. Um, and I guess I might as well go ahead and demonstrate it. See, it took so I did a geyser command there, but look at how long the recovery was. So there is no such thing as instant geyser. And I was able to guard. Now, I can't guard that. So there's no way to instant geyser. It takes her quite a long time to recover. Uh, I was late on that. See, I was able to guard. I'll play on that again. There we go. You basically, you react to the teleport. There you go. I'm still practicing this. I don't have it down perfectly every time. I just recently started doing this. What I used to do is just 2-1 because I wanted the... Here's why I used to use 2-1. I would use 2-1 because it's an easy confirm 1-2 is not. And I was... Worried that I may do it late, and then 1-2 Ice Ball, they guard it, block the Ice Ball, and kill me. So I used 2-1. The problem is when she did a far teleport, um, this would happen. So I ended up just doing slides. And if she did a close teleport, I would get a slide. And a far teleport, I would get a slide. But I was losing so much damage on close teleport. Instead of my maximum combo, I'm getting just a few percent and she's pretty much back and far away from me again. So what you really want to do is you want to, if you're not a character who is able to punish the far one, you want to make sure that you can do something to check them for the close teleport while keeping yourself safe from the far teleport. So again, you want to look at the recovery frames of your move. You want ideally a fast startup and you want the recovery to be fast. 20 frames is oh seems to be okay in a situation like this for Cetrion. If I do something 23, 24, 25 frames, she's going to get the geyser every time. I am just barely able to guard with a move that has 20 frames of recovery. So now this is how a character like Cetrion's teleport works. There are other teleports that work the exact same way. Scarlet and the Collector, their teleports work the exact same way. If you react too soon, um, then they, you don't auto, there's no auto facing, then you don't basically turn around and they hit you. If you react too late, they guard or poke you. You teleport down one, down three, etc. So Scarlet has the most unsafe teleport of all. She has the worst recovery frames of any possible character in in the game right now. So basically I have Scarlet Teleport. It says 42 recovery frames. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of recovery. Like look at how look at how hard it was for me to do the back one on uh, Cetrion. Look at how easy it is oops, for me to do it on Scarlet just about every time. So hers is massively unsafe. So but if I on reaction and dude, she's almost completely behind, right there she was basically completely behind me I go the wrong way so again down neutral you always auto face and again if she does her far teleport right oh I did down up there she can't you basically recover nearly the exact same time. Whereas again, look at how long it takes to recover. So down neutral, one, two. You use that for Scarlet, for Collector. Collectors love to teleport far away and do a forward, whatever that move is, forward three, forward four, whatever it is. Love to do it. Love it. Love every second of it. Doing something like this, you're safe. He gets no punish. So if he teleports next to you, guaranteed punish, he teleports far away, and I guess I might as well demonstrate it. <clears throat> Since we're demonstrating all teleports. Now, this is something that you can consider uh, if DLC uh, that are coming at maybe Combat Pack 2 has teleports. So one of them has a teleport or multiple characters have a teleport. You can kind of go through it and kind of educate yourself on, okay, here's how I test the recovery. Here's how I, I punish properly, etc. So I've set the collector to um, uh, teleport here. 
and guard. Now, again, go the wrong way. He's basically completely behind me here. Look at that hesitation. Look how long that takes. React to it. He goes the wrong way. But, down neutral. Again, look at how long this takes, right? Oops. I'm still getting used to it. Collectors isn't so bad. It's Collectors is mega minus as well. But it's it's pretty easy to do that. But again, sometimes in the heat of the moment, notice, and you already have this muscle memory trained for characters like Cetrion. So why go off of it? And you pretty much react to it. See? Just seems you think I'm, I'm anticipating. See? You wait till you see it. I don't do it until I see the flames. Get it every single time. Now, if he were to teleport all the way over here. Again, we recover very, very similarly. This, he wouldn't be able, I'd be able to recover just in time to block whatever kind of attack he's going to do. But again, the collector, you know, if you have an attack that, adva that advances, you can punish that quite easily. And the collector's teleport is one of the easiest ones to kind of just, uh, whoops, I'm doing down up. Uh, one of the easiest ones to kind of like, you know, react to the flames. But even then, see, look, again, I went the wrong way. And I'm just looking to react to the flames, and I went the wrong way. So there is hesitation there. And there's no mistake when I get this right. And you want to make sure you don't do it until you see flames. So when you practice this, you don't do it until you see flames. And this is how you know. Not to his reacting, not to his movement, but you do it when you see flames, then you do it. And this is how you practice getting it down. Now, to a character like Raiden, because again, look at your frames, turn around. And now you circumvent those frames. Now, lastly, we're gonna to go to Raiden. We're gonna cover Raiden's teleport. Raiden is kind of weird, right? We just saw Cetrion's teleport was 37 recovery frames, and this is, this is where people get confused. We go to Raiden's Teleport. Raiden's Teleport says it recovers in 19 frames, and this is why people get confused by how this actually works. 19 recovery frames doesn't compute that it's actually more unsafe than 37 recovery frames, but look at Raiden's animation. Like, look at how quickly Raiden animates and goes behind the opponent, right? It's the fastest animation of all of them. So, it's got the fastest recovery because he gets from here to here faster than everybody else and that factors to the recovery frames. However, a character like Raiden, not too early. This is actually much easier to do than against uh, Cetrion. Uh, you just see you don't have to hesitate on Raiden. And just to kind of show you, Raiden, this is minus 17, he blocks it, right? Minus 14, he gets hit by it. In reality, Raiden's is actually minus 15. So he's actually one frame, one frame more unsafe than Cetrion. because I'm pretty much down to the frame on this. I practiced this quite a bit, and I couldn't get it. I, I had to move minus 16. It was 16 frames, and it can hit. So Raiden's, I mean, uh, minus 15. So Raiden's teleport, 15 frames of recovery. Cetrion's, 
14 true frames of recovery, even though the frame data says Raiden recovers at 19. He actually recovers at 15. And this is much easier to do. I mean, you saw how hard this was against Cetrion. It's much easier to do against Raiden. Um, and again, it's because you have a bigger window. Now, Raiden, you don't need to do down neutral. His teleport is super fast. And by the time you actually can humanly react to it, the punish is already there. So, in reacting to it, by the time you actually can react to it, you're able to punish it every time. So Raiden's teleport is so fast. Look at this. Um, startup is 11. Cetrion's was 38, right? So when you have super fast startup, uh, you, you know, you're able to just pretty much, you know, turn around normally in 1-2. So pretty much you, you, you muscle memory-wise, against those characters, down neutral, Go with your punish and remember the recovery frames are really really important in case they do a far teleport if you are against raiden and so far only raiden you don't want to down neutral so it's pretty simple everybody but raiden down neutral then teleport score you know just meaning a teleport not a teleport with an attack like scorpions or jays as long as the teleport is its own move doesn't have an attack attached to it this is what you want to do Everybody but Raiden, down neutral, and whatever a super fast move is with good recovery. Against Raiden, react to it, punish it. Make sure the move has good recovery, though, on Whiff, in case he does the far teleport. And this is pretty much how you deal with these types of teleports. I can do a video, maybe down the line, dealing with teleports like Kung Lao, Jade, etc. These are a more by-character basis. It's not really like a universal kind of formula. This right here, you can take straight into the DLC. If a DLC has a teleport, you can go right into practice mode, see the recovery, see the startup. If the startup is light speed, you know you don't need to do down neutral. If the startup is slower, you'll know you will need to do down neutral to kind of speed up your turnaround frames. And now you also know that there's a difference between the recovery frames and true recovery frames, and you know to test that as well. So. I really hope this video helps. I know I went on kind of lengthy, but ironically, there actually is quite a bit of depth to a lot of the things in the system of this game. There actually is quite a, a lot to lab. It's very easy to just close your mind to things and say, there's nothing to lab. God knows I was a victim of this. Um, uh, I victimized myself by this, but uh, something somebody said to me and made me realize, you know, uh, Anybody can come up with problems. Uh, a real leader of the community, somebody who really wants the community to grow, they don't come up with problems. Anybody can do that. You come up with solutions. That's what leaders do. And that's where I'm going from now on in this game. I hope this video helps. Stay tuned to a ton more of tutorials and a lot of the stuff in this game. And thanks for watching, guys. As always, see you next time.